Welcome to Rundown. First up, we have the main topic of today, the biggest change in the history of Mordekaiser, except maybe his rework. It seems Riot has decided that negating an entire champion with a 1300 gold purchase isn't a good gameplay decision, and thus, as of patch 14.8, Mordekaiser ult will no longer be QSSable. This kind of reminds me of the time when you used to be able to QSS Zed's ult off you, but in the same vein as this change was probably a bit too strong negating 25% of a champion's kit, and probably the strongest 25% with just one component purchase. As we see in this giant list of changes coming in patch 14.8 released by Frox on the other day, the MSI patch snuck in a cheeky Mordekaiser adjustment at the very bottom. I personally think the QSS change is needed, but obviously time will tell if it will make him too strong. It's definitely possible to outplay or kite the Mordekaiser in his ult, but if a 5-0 Mordekaiser comes out of laning phase and flash ults your ADC, yeah this could be a bit of a problem. I also think the opposite is possible though, where if an 0-5 Mordekaiser comes to team fight and he has built Rylize and Zonyas, they can just ult the most fed member of the enemy team and just stall them inside his ult. Yeah, he might be useless and he might die, but he's stalled the most fed enemy member for God knows how long. I wonder if these changes will bring up his presence in MSI at all, but he is still a mobile, so there's that to consider. But of course, I want to know all your opinions in the comments below. Up next, there were two other changes Riot touched on I wanted to address. One was the potential of making Baron a bit stronger. Froxon spoke about the drawbacks of making Baron too threatening to take in terms of drawing games out, but as it stands, he probably could still do with a bit more punching power. And the other one was a Grubby's buff. Hellfelt Grubs were a little bit on the weak side as far as a neutral objective goes, and I guess Riot themselves shared this stance too. In the MSI patch, a quote from Froxon, we're buffing Void Grubs this patch by buffing the damage and the number of grubs required to get the first grub summon spawn. We're also separating the spawn time from Dragon a bit to make trading less of a reality and to have teams engage in more conflict. Typically, junglers were still sacking grubs in exchange for Dragon, which just again was a negative for top laners and meant there was still less contact, splitting the map essentially. So, I don't mind this change. Just before we move on, if you've ever learned anything or been entertained by my content, a sub goes a long way and you can always change your mind later. Thank you in advance. Up next, we got some beef. Following the G2 rinse of BDS, G2 posted this clip of poor Adam seemingly giving up as Caps and Broken Blade converge top lane. Check it out. Look like a carry. <laughs> get flopped. Oh, yeah. That you, is not you really say get one flopped. Me. Dang, but you might be fired after that one. Adam, <laughs> Adam standing still. He's so over it. I don't blame him. Why would you? He's experienced trauma in this game. Is he talking to Swiffer? Adam might try and turn around on Caps. I think- As far as competitive integrity goes, I don't really think I've seen someone basically S-key in a competitive game. It might even be against the right competitive rules. Uh, one of them says, I must try my hardest to win at all times or something like that, I don't know. Uh, I think I even saw a photo of Adam all chatting asking G2 if they can FF because the game was pretty much over. Either way, G2 versus BDS garnered a fair bit of response from the wider community with Monte Cristo tweeting about the whole thing saying, quote, I think it's clear as day that G2's scrims will leak to BDS. No way in hell that BDS would have had their bot lane at red buff on blue side at 130 otherwise. It's funny that G2's scrim opponents think the only way to beat them is to surreptitiously leak their lane swap strats. To which Adam, the BDS top laner replied, you're actually so fucking delusional. Shout out to Lebrov calling the swap angle the moment G2 locked Scion. Besides that, we also know what's going on in other leagues. We saw the nip game. Our adaptation on game one was full on Lebrov instinct that we listened to. Get a life. This response, completely ratioing Monty, got another reply from him saying, quote, you might be right. If you had Fully prepared for it, you might not have picked Aatrox and played like shit. To Monty's statements, essentially accusing BDS of cheating, then getting proven wrong, then just flaming Adam for no reason, a lot of people were in support of BDS, claiming there was actually a high probability they knew what was going to happen based on G2's draft, seeing as the same strategy was done in Game 4 of NIP versus FPX when a lane swap happened. This isn't the first time Adam has been amidst controversy, seeing as he has had instances in the past involving his integrity as a player, but yeah, I don't think he's in the wrong with this one. But of course, you guys like let me know what you think in the comments below. So uh, up next might be one of the most unique pentakills I think I've ever seen. This comes from Salskier, a long-standing high elo vein player from an A. Just check it out. What the fuck? So if you missed it, he uh, he actually did indeed accept a queue for another game that was loading up, assuming it was a smurf or something, uh, taking the alt-tabbing faker meme a bit too literally. 
literally in the middle of a pentakill, this guy alt tabs to accept another games. Crazy stuff. And for the last story of today, I just have to share this achievement by Manko, a high elo Teemo player from NA. Instead of telling you what's so impressive about it, I'm going to let Pro Belter and Double Lift and Charismai. Wait, it's is it Teemo Shaco bot? Holy shit, little devil Teemo is popping off right now. This, these guys are going demonic. I actually should have went cleanse if I knew it was Teemo Shaco. It's quite the bot lane. This is IGN, Teemo221. He got a 71% win rate, and he only plays Teemo mid and bot. Wow. Holy fuck, what is this account? He plays Teemo ADC with Ignite? Nah, this is some season one shit, bro. What? He just took off Doublelift's head? This, I gotta, I gotta know how he reacted. He's playing Karma Zaya into Shaco Teemo. Yeah, and then he turned off his stream. Yeah, I would probably be sad too. So as you just heard, Manko was able to hit an extremely impressive 70% win rate all the way up to 590 LP Grandmaster as the account currently stands. If you want to see if you can take his Teemo ADC all the way to Challenger, all his links will be in the description. Also, he's a lovely dude. I met him in Korea at Worlds and his stream is just super chill and good vibes. Anyway, that'll do us for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you guys with some more news soon. Bye.